I'm Peter Greister, and through 2014, my two colleagues, Mohammed Fami, Baha Mohammed, and I were all arrested, tried, and convicted on terrorism charges in Egypt. The charges related to the work we were doing for Al Jazeera English, and our case became a cause to live for media freedom and human rights in Egypt more broadly. Now, at the time, I struggled to make sense of what we were going through. The gap between what we were accused of doing, which was joining a terrorist group, and what we were actually doing, pretty mundane journalism, was so wide that I couldn't understand how anybody could draw the kinds of conclusions that the prosecution and the judges ultimately came to. Now, our case wasn't the first in which journalists were in prison for doing their jobs and challenging the work of the government, and it certainly wasn't the last. According to the New York-based Committee for the Protection of Journalists, Egypt ranks third in the world for the number of journalists who've been locked up. By the end of last year, the CPJ counted at least 20 behind bars, and like us, most of them are there on charges that could broadly be described as anti-state, treason, sedition, and more commonly, terrorism. In fact, at the time of our trial, the Interior Minister insisted that the CPJ's count was wrong. There were no journalists in prison for their journalism, he said, or were there because they, we, had joined and supported terrorist groups. The Egyptian government has repeatedly insisted that these cases are not about freedom of speech or media freedom. Those rights are enshrined in the Constitution after all. Rather, the cases were about national security, about protecting the country from the men of violence who would overthrow the state by force and impose draconian rule. In cases like those, where the state insists it is behaving with respect for the rule of law and due process and trying only to protect its citizens, it is hard for the claims of injustice by those behind bars to get a fair hearing. After all, very few people who've been arrested on terrorism charges ever admit their guilt. It becomes a contest of claim and counterclaim. In those situations, the only way to hold governments to account is through independent human rights groups like the Egyptian Commission for Rights and Freedoms, the kind of groups that act with courage, professionalism and commitment to document abuses by the state. That's what happened in our case. Mohamed Lotfi, the founder and executive director for the Commission, came to every one of the dozen hearings to document the trial and report back to Amnesty International. He became one of the most credible observers of what was taking place and one of our trial's most potent critics. His voice was vital in our wider campaign for freedom. But one case alone of a human right abused is never enough to put pressure on a government. Even the most restrained and responsible governments will occasionally screw up, after all. What is needed is a consistent and sustained record of cases that show a pattern of abuse designed to silence critics and shut down dissent. That's exactly what the Commission has been doing, and at a time when almost all other groups in Egypt have been banned, intimidated, exiled or broken up, often with extreme violence. It has continued to work not just in spite of the pressure, but because of it. Because it knows just how important its work remains in a country with so few independent voices remaining. As a country that claims to be a democracy, Egypt needs a vigorous public debate. It needs the oversight of a free media and human rights defenders. It needs to be able to tolerate criticism and argument. It is a very long way from that kind of ideal, but can, it can never get there without groups like the Egyptian Commission for Rights and Freedoms. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Commission for being shortlisted for the award. And although I am slightly biased, I for one hope they get it. Lord knows they deserve it. Thank you.